Welcome to another AutoCAD tip and trick from Lynda.com. What we're going to look at this time is the Group Manager in AutoCAD and how it allows you to create and manage groups effectively in your AutoCAD drawings. So to that end we have a new drawing open for you. You can see that at the top of the screen and you can download that from your Lynda.com exercise files as usual to follow along with the video. So what we're going to look at is the group manager and the group manager allows us to create groups of objects in our AutoCAD drawings. Now as usual I have totally simplified the drawing you can see that we've just got some very simple objects there on the screen and I do that deliberately so that you guys can see the technique rather than have to look at a really complex drawing with loads of objects, loads of colours, loads of hatches and fills everywhere. It's a lot easier to demonstrate something using a much, much simpler drawing, which is why we've got a simple drawing there with some polygons, some rectangles and some circles. So what I want to do now is I want to be able to group some of these objects into what they call an AutoCAD group. So you go to the Home tab on the ribbon and you'll see that you have a Groups panel. And it's all in here, so you can have a group bounding box. Now the group bounding box is on by default, and it's very, very useful, so always leave it on. So if that's blue, leave it blue. Don't switch it off, because it shows the group boundary, so to speak. So I'm going to go up here now and create a group of objects. So I click on the group command, like so, and select the objects I want to put into a group. I'm going to select these objects here. That's my first group, and then I'm going to press Enter, like so. Now an unnamed group has been created there. So there's my unnamed group. If I click on it now, there's the bounding box that I mentioned earlier. Now what I need to do is give that group a name. So if I select that now and go to perhaps my group manager here, you'll see that there's no group name. So what I need to do is create a new group as such. So I create a new group here, like so, and I want them selectable. Do I want them unnamed? No, I don't. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this. So I'm going to use the group manager to create the group. And you'll see what happens. If I click on cancel there and select this group here, I can ungroup anything really quickly. So I just come in here and you'll see I've got different commands here. So I've got group edit and I've got ungroup as well. So if I went to group edit like so, I can add objects, remove objects, or I can rename the group. So there's all these different ways and means of messing around with the group. So if I rename now, enter a new name for the group. So I'm going to call this Group 1. I know that's thoroughly unoriginal, but hey, there we go. So there's Group 1. So now, if I jump back into the Group Manager, there's my Group 1. It is selectable. I can give it a description. So it might be First Group. Again, I know, totally unimaginative, but such is life. Now I can highlight that group in the drawing. If I click on highlight, can you see there? It highlights it in the drawing, which is why it's really, really useful to use these in really, really busy drawings. So I click on to continue there, it takes me back to my group one. So I can explode that, I can add objects to it, I can remove and so on. Now if I add, it now says select objects. So if I select say this little group of objects here, press enter, they are now added to my group. When I click on OK, I now have that group instead. So you can see how the group manager allows you just to generate groups of objects. Now the benefit is that group of objects has a grip. I can click on the grip. I can move that group over here. I can also, as a group, use something like the move command, pick a point on an element of the group, and I'll move it up here, for example. So you can see how these groups are really useful. You can group a whole group of objects together. So you can group polylines, you can group blocks, you can group just lines or perhaps even dimensions might be grouped. You might have a group of standard dimensions that go on a standard part, for example. All of these can be grouped. And the lovely thing is, is I can ungroup anything at any time. So if I select that like that and go back up here to groups, you'll see here, ungroup. If I ungroup now, they're not in the group anymore. They're all their own individual objects again. But if I go to the group manager, you'll notice that group one has also disappeared. So when you ungroup, you lose the group in the group manager as well. 
So just be aware of that because there's nothing worse than having a really, really complex group. You ungroup it, you lose everything. Okay, be aware that you do lose everything. One thing you can do though is when you do create a new group, you can make it unselectable. So it's fixed in place and people can't select that group and ungroup. So just be aware you can make it unselectable as well if you need to.